John Ford John Wayne History Stagecoach is a film in which two great careers were renewed. Although he had appeared before in many films, as an extra, a stuntman and then an actor in B-films, this was John Wayne's first starring role in a film by John Ford. For Ford, it was a return after some years to a genre about which his ideas had grown the genre in which he would make many of his greatest films. With Ford's clout as a director and Wayne's clout as a star, they would make iconic films and establish themselves as one of the legendary partnerships in cinema. They came together at a propitious moment in Ford's career. He was 45. He had directed his first silent films, 10 of them, in 1917. He had tasted great success, and won an Academy Award for directing The Informer in 1936. But now came his years of triumph. No director of the sound era made more great films more quickly than Ford did when he followed Stagecoach with Young Mr. Lincoln and Drums Along the Mohawk, all three in 1939, and then made The Grapes of Wrath and The Long Voyage Home in 1940 and Tobacco Road and How Green Was My Valley in 1941, collecting in that period three nominations and two Oscars for directing. Ford had his eye on John Wayne from the days when he was called Marion Morrison, nicknamed Duke, and was a football player from USC, working summers at 20th Century Fox. In the decade before Stagecoach Wayne worked in some 40 westerns, from an extra to a lead, without distinguishing himself. Ford thought he had the makings of a star, and decided Wayne was right for the key role of the Ringo Kid in Stagecoach. The studio was adamantly opposed to the casting, it demanded a name actor. Happy Ford imperiously insisted. And Wayne made an impression that would change his life and one day win him a place on a US postage stamp. Seen today, Stagecoach may not seem very original. That's because it influenced countless later movies in which a mixed bag of characters are thrown together by chance and forced to survive an ordeal. The genre is sometimes called the art movie. The film at times plays like an anthology of timeless cliches. You will see a woman going into labor as a doctor orders, boil water, hot water, and lots of it. You will meet a prostitute with a heart of gold, and an evil banker, and a shifty gambler, and a pure-hearted heroine, and murderous Apaches, and a sultry Indian wife, and a meek little traveling man, and a chase scene with a stagecoach driver going hell for leather. You will see saloons, corrals, vast landscape, campfires, and the US cavalry which sounds the charge before riding to the rescue. Despite the familiarity of these conventions, Stagecoach holds our attention effortlessly and is paced with the elegance of a symphony. Ford doesn't squander his action and violence in an attempt to whore for those with short attention spans, but tells Astory, during which we learn to know the characters and become invested in them. He doesn't give all the key scenes to the same big star. Top billing went to Claire Trevor, as Dallas, the lady of pleasure. Dallas. One is reminded of Marlena Dietrich, I didn't become Shanghai Lil in one night. Trevor was a star, but Ford gave nearly equal weight to the other passengers in the stagecoach, all played by actors who would have been familiar to movie audiences, squeaky voiced Andy Devine as the driver, John Carradine as the elegant gambler, Thomas Mitchell as the alcoholic Doc Boone, Louise Platt as the pregnant soldier's wife, and Donald Meek as the effeminate Mr. Peacock, a traveling salesman who improbably wears a checkered deer stalker hat in the Old West. As they line up facing each other, the Ringo kid sits on the floor between them, but Ford somehow never frames him to seem lower.